Yo, what is going on? What is up, people? We got another mock draft coming up for you. And this time, you can see the first two picks might look a little bit different than normal. Uh, we're getting a little bit wild with this one, I won't lie. Um, maybe a little bit too experimental, but... You know? These things could happen. Uh, it's the NFL draft. Anything can happen. Um, and obviously, we got the Giants here at number one. They just lost Daniel Jones for the season. And as a Giants fan, I want to die right now. This season has been the complete opposite of last season. Last season, we went in with no expectations and got a playoff win. This year, we come in with the expectations of trying to get back to the playoffs or at least being in that you know, wild card conversation, and now we're looking at getting another quarterback. However, when that quarterback at number one is Caleb Williams, who should be a generational talent at the position, I have honestly no concern because this kid is amazing. The arm talent is Basically, unlike any other, unless you're talking Patrick Mahomes, Herbert, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, like those types of guys. Like, Caleb Williams is that dude. The Washington game that he j just played in this last week was insane. He carried that team to all 42 of those points. Um, defense is horrible. That's why USC D coordinator got fired. But regardless, Caleb Williams to the Giants. Reset, Dable gets his new QB, and the Giants go forward. But at number two is not the Chicago Bears. It is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who have kind of been hit by reality a little bit since their start. But, you know, if you're the Buccaneers and you're sitting at eight, the Bears might not take a QB. I really don't know what they're going to do. But you're within at least striking distance. And I don't even know. Like, the Bucks could be closer by the end of the year. They could be in, like, the the six, the six, 5 or 6 range um, for picks. Because I imagine with Kyler Murray coming back for the Cardinals as well, that they'll probably win some games. Um, so here, obviously, you don't draft or trade up to two for nothing. Buccaneers are going to go. Go get their quarterback of future in Drake May out of North Carolina. Another guy with an insane arm. Like, this kid is absolutely incredible. Um, and there's not much more to say after that is outside of he is just, like, pinpoint accurate. His, like, decision well in the play and like in the pocket is so good it might be it's probably best in this class it is honestly but may stays on the east coast but heads a little bit south down to tampa bay and now the chicago bears are up at pick number three and you still have marvin harrison here so he's that best receiver in the class best receiver we've seen probably Oh, since Calvin Johnson, maybe, coming out of the draft. Like, this dude is, he might end up being better than his dad. Like, and that's saying a lot. Hall of Famer, this dude is incredible. Route running, separation skills. Like, he has the speed to go deep and be a deep threat. But he is so good with that. His cuts in route run, it, oh, chef's kid, it is beautiful. Number four for the Arizona Cardinals, and this one might be a little bit interesting for some people. I'm going to go Dallas Turner because they don't really have a lot of defensive help. And I know this is a very, like, offensive heavy draft at the top of it but dallas turner he's he's pretty twitched up he's got some speed around the edge um he had a little bit of a dirty hit on Jaden daniels but i don't think it was intentional 
Um, but they need edge help badly. And it, edge help helps your secondary. And maybe in free agency, you can bring in someone who can play across from him. That's better than, you know, Zayvon Collins coming in off the blitz. So you go and get maybe the best edge rusher in this draft class. My top edge rusher will be in a few picks, and we will get to him in a second. But with the number five overall pick, or the fifth overall pick, I should say, the New England Patriots are going to get their tackle of the future in Olu Fushanu, who could definitely go a pick before this, or even two picks. Um, but they just need edge help. That's all it is. So not much more to say. He's been the best tackle in the country, in my opinion. Uh, even though Joe Alt, who is going to go right after, has been a stud as well as my cat is having a fit right now from God knows what. Um, but, I mean, the Rams need help everywhere. Go get your tackle of the future. Good Lord, does Matthew Stafford need that. Stafford has been killed all season, man. He has been injured since day one, basically. And uh, Joe Alt could definitely help that. Pick number seven, Green Bay Packers. And I didn't really know where to go with this one. And then I looked like, okay, you would go Brock Bowers if you didn't just draft Luke Musgrave and uh, Tucker Craft. So Kool-Aid McKinstry. Get your guy across from Jair Alexander, who's getting a little bit older but still completely dominant. Um, Eric Stokes is a little bit injury prone. You just trade away Razul Douglas for, I, I couldn't tell you. Good to a little bit on the, uh, let's say stupid side sometimes, but it is what it is. It's the nature of the NFL. Kool-Aid McKinstry is better than Razul Douglas day one when he comes in though. He can shut down the other side of the field with ease. He is incredible. Smooth, fluid hips on the outside. He can punt return, which please do not do, and basically force an injury on this kid because he is incredible. Pick number eight, Chicago Bears. And the fans might be yelling for Brock Bowers, but that is not where we are going. We are going with my edge one. You just brought in Montez Sweat. Get someone across from him. I do not think uh, Travis Gibson or Dominic Robinson is your future at least starting there? Dominic Robinson's fine as a backup, but Leatu Latu across from Montez Sweat, the speed rush duo would be insane. And then you have Javon Dexter, Zach Pickens there developing in the middle of that defense with Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards behind them. Oh, money. You are building a Chicago-type defense with that pick, and I love it. Pick number nine, Denver Broncos. Are going to go tackle, but maybe not one that you would think. Um, it is a little bit high for him. Originally, I did go Jordan Morgan, but I'm going to switch this. To uh, Talise Fuwaga, I believe is his name. Um, and he's just been a stud at Oregon State. I, I think he would fit the Sean Payton offense a little bit better than Jordan Morgan, who I originally had in here, or even a J.C. Latham, a Marius Mims, who's had a little bit of injury issues this year. So Fuwaga goes here at 9. Super good run blocker. Could still develop as a pass blocker, but he is pretty dominant at his size. He is really, really good. Pick number 10. This is easy for me um, once I got here. You have D-Hop for next year. Traylon Burks I still like. Hopefully he's okay after that scary Thursday night injury um, last week. Uh, you have Chris Moore and... Um, Westbrook Akine. I th is it? Yeah, it's Westbrook Akine, right? Or it's not Akine Westbrook. 
I don't know. But you've got some decent guys at receiver. You still have Derrick Henry. You have Tajay Spears as well at the running back position. Why not get Will Levis, someone that can block in the run game, and an absolute threat in the pass game? To me, Brock Bowers is a better prospect than the guy called the Unicorn, Kyle Pitts, from Florida a couple years ago. Brock Bowers should be Heisman-like candidate if he did not get injured. Like, seriously, he is that good. Pick number 11, Atlanta Falcons. Arthur Smith continues to piss everyone off with his decisions. Give B. John Robinson the ball, but that is for a different time, that conversation. Get yourself a damn quarterback in this draft. Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke is not the future. I'm going to go J.J. McCarthy. I think he has higher upside than a Bo Nix and a Penix. And maybe fits this scheme a little bit better. Um, he is pretty pinpoint accurate. Maybe not as pinpoint as a Drake May or a Caleb Williams, but he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He has really developed in his time at Michigan, so that is good to see. Uh, but now we go on to pick number 12, the Washington Commanders who just traded the house. Now you're basically restarting. And I'm going to give you another edge rusher, and it's going to be Jared Verse, and that's not a bad one to get. He is twitched up as well. Maybe has a little more power than um, Turner or L Latu. He can turn that speed into power a lot better than the both of them. Um, that's just he's bigger in size, really. But he's still got some twitchiness to him and some speed. He can bend around the corner. Not as well as Latu. I will give Latu does it better than anyone in this class. But Jared Verse is a solid, solid pick at number twelve to rebuild that D line. And I have my doubts that old Riverboat Ron is gonna be there next season. But Jared Verse absolutely at number twelve. Indianapolis Colts at number thirteen, and go get Anthony Richardson. An absolute weapon. Deep threat, route runner, possession. Put him in the backfield. Malik Abrams does it all for LSU. Him and Brian uh, Thomas, who might end up getting some first-round hype at the end of this whole draft process and the end of the year because he has been incredible as well. But Malik Neighbors is a different breed. Just go watch an LSU game, man. He is absolutely incredible. Um, scores touchdown from the backfield, from the slot, from the outside, punt return, kick return, whatever you want to put him at, he will score. He is a touchdown machine. He is a separating machine with his speed and would be a huge addition to that cold offense next to a, position, a possession receiver in Michael Pittman and then your slot in Josh Downs, who's also explosive as well. Pick number 14, the Raiders who got a nice little win after firing old Josh McDaniels, who everyone knows is the worst coach in NFL history. Um, they need some guys on the outside. And what better, or who better, I should say, than Cooper DeJean, who has the versatility to play inside, outside, safety, wherever you need him. He can play punt return. We've seen his explosiveness against Minnesota, even though... That touchdown got called back for some stupid reason. Um, Cooper DeGene, easy pick, I feel like, right here. Definitely could have gone, say, uh, Johnny Newton from Illinois to help that run D. But they haven't been completely horrible this season. So, Cooper DeGene at 14, heading to the West Coast. Pick number 15, Cardinals' second pick. And... I don't know how popular this second pick might be considering you have guys like a Jerzon Newton maybe or a Mecca, Romeo Dunze, get some corner help. I am actually double dipping into the edge and getting Chop Robinson. So you walk away in the first round with Chop Robinson and Dallas Turner in a completely revitalized D-line now in Arizona that can get after 
the quarterback in a hurry. I think it's pretty good. I, I did almost go like a Kalen King or a Nate Wiggins. Um, I feel like Kalen King probably fits the Jonathan Gannon defense a little bit better. However... Chop Robinson's too good here to pass up. So I went with it. Almost went Keon Coleman as well. Get your jump ball guy. But I feel like Michael Wilson can kind of be that guy, even though he's more of a possession, route running, technical kind of receiver. And then you have Marquise Brown, obviously, over the top. Um, Rondell Moore in the slot more. And maybe put him in the backfield. He's very versatile. But Chop Robinson and Dallas Turner, I think, is a fantastic first round for the Cardinals. And Jonathan Gannon would be loving it. Because remember, at Philly, they got edge rusher after edge rusher after edge rusher. So he is, I'm sure, not afraid to double dip here in this loaded edge class. Pick number 16 was originally... Um, my cat's going nuts again. Originally, I was going to go Fuaga here for the Jets. Hold on. Okay. Originally, it was going to be Fuaga. Now, I'm thinking either J.C. Latham or Jordan Morgan. And I don't know which way I want to develop pretty well this year, and he's looked really good. Um, you know what? I said we were getting crazy in this, and I really like Jordan Morgan's potential. We're going to go Jordan Morgan. I think he's a better pass protector than Latham. Uh, definitely needs to work on run blocking a little more, even though he is a monster in the run game, regardless. Uh, both guys, though, I don't think you can go wrong. Even Amarius Mims, who's fallen a little bit just because of that injury concern. But get Aaron Rodgers some protection. I don't know. Uh, I don't think Dwayne Brown's coming back. I don't know what's going to happen with Makai Becton. So... Jordan Morgan is the pick here at 16. Pain. And I do have in my notes Chargers going Kalen King. But with Jazan Newton here, I don't hate that either. Even Kalen, uh, or not Kalen King, but Nate Wiggins. Or Leonard Taylor. Although I think Johnny Newton's probably better than Stick with Kalen King. Uh, he did get a little bit torched by Marvin Harrison a couple weeks ago. Who doesn't um, fault him for that? So there were times where they the Penn State basically, and not the best decision. King is still really good. He can play man. He can play. I love people thought including right now. So Kalen King for the Chargers at seventeen. Good value and really helps out that secondary so that Asante Samuel is the only NFL corner out there. Pick number 18. We're going back-to-back -back corners. This one, though, is going to be Nate Wiggins. And, and Nate Wiggins has been a dog this year. Um, but the Bills really need this. I mean, their secondary has been littered with injuries, including Tredavious White, who went down with his second ACL injury now. I'm pretty sure, unless it was an Achilles. It might have been an Achilles. I don't know. Something to do with her body, though. I thought it was ACL, but now I'm kind of rethinking it. Regardless, he's had an ACL before, and now he has this injury this year. Don't know how good he'll be considering his age as well, now coming back from that. So go get yourself a corner of the future to pair up. Hopefully with Kyrie uh, Elam, maybe he can make a little bit of a return. Get that confidence back in him. I mean, Teron Johnson, though, and Dane Jackson have been pretty damn good themselves for the Bills. But Nate Wiggins, he's different from those guys, let me say. Uh, pick number 19 for the Saints. And we are going to go J.C. Latham pretty easily here. Uh, they just need more protection, in my opinion. Um, I think... Derek Carr's fine at quarterback right now. And, you know, you really only have uh, Ramchek out there. And then the, the interior is fine, but across from Ramchek, it's not very good. So get your tackle of the future and J.C. Latham. Might have to develop him a little bit, but he's 
pretty damn good. Pick number 20, this one to me was such an easy pick. I do feel bad for Kirk Cousins and all, but Bo Nix in this offense feels just like perfect, literally perfect. And because unlike Kirk, Bo Nix can create with his legs. He's also very accurate and has shown that he can develop from his Auburn tape to his Oregon tape. It's a completely different player. It's insane. So he he's shown the coachability. He has shown the development. And the improvements he has made has been incredible. It's been super fun to watch. He is definitely in the Heisman consideration this year for a good reason. Uh, Bonix at 20 to the Vikings. Pick number 21. Dallas loves their tackles. Amarius Mim still sitting here. Absolute mammoth of a human being. He almost slips to 22 for the Steelers. So then they could put him across from his former teammate in Broderick Jones. Doesn't happen though. Tyron Smith is just old. I mean... He's been there for how many years now? He's been awesome, but they need, they're going to need someone across from Tyler Smith once he's gone. Marius Mims is the perfect, perfect addition to that line, in my opinion. Um, just a absolute bruiser in the run game. He, he will maul you, man. That's what I should have said, an absolute mauler in the run game. But Marius Mims to the Cowboys at 21. Pittsburgh Steelers wishing that he would have fell, though, to 22. Not going to matter, though. Get your middle linebacker of the future. That's where I was going anyways. Jeremiah Trotter, Barrett Carter. It, I don't really care where you go. One of these two Clemson linebackers is going to go in the first round. Maybe both of them because they are that good. Um, and now, especially with uh, Dylan, uh, Dylan Cole... Or, no, Cole Holcomb. Cole Holcomb. Uh, Cole Holcomb, scary injury, for one. Uh, hope he's all right and can come back. But he was not ever the answer there at middle linebacker. Jeremiah Trotta or Barrett Carter definitely will be. And for the Steelers, either one of them works. And this is a great pick. So, Moving on to pick number 23, Houston Texans. Emeka Ibuka. In my opinion, wide receiver three in this class, two neighbors in Harrison, um, which doesn't say that much because those two are the number one and number two receivers in every single class the past five years and the next five years, honestly. Um, but Ibuka, you mat, uh, match him up again with CJ Stroud, who has been on a Fucking tear, by the way. He has been incredible. Um, and now you just add Emeka Buka, your route runner, to a offense that has its jump ball possession receiver in Nico Collins. You have another possession receiver kind of route runner in um, John Mechie. You have Tank Dell out of the slot and a utility guy out of the backfield who has been incredible. Dalton Schultz at tight end who's been very good. But I believe he's on a one-year contract, but they should honestly re-sign him. And then you add a Mecca Ibuka who can be your wide receiver one. Route runner, deep threat, everything. He is a dog here at 23 to the Texans. Pick number 24, though, for the Cincinnati Bengals. Thought about Keon Coleman. I'm going to go Rome Odunze out of the University of Washington. I think he's a little bit better than Keon Coleman. I think he offers a little more. Um, and I think it's a perfect replacement for a T. Higgins if you can't re-sign him. And even a Tyler Boyd. Like, Jamar Chase is awesome. He can do anything for you. Now you bring in Odunze, who is... He has the route running ability, but he's also got the deep threat ability. You got him and Chase across from each other. That is elite 
and scary as hell for any defense. Pick number 25. This one was pretty easy as well. Jamal Adams can't stay healthy. Go get your... Go get the safety of the future, Cam Kitchens, out of the U. Out of the U. And uh, he's he's just so good, man. He can be your ball hawk. He can be in the box. He can be in the slot covering. He is a damn good safety. And unfortunately for Jamal Adams, the injuries have just piled up too much to where this has to happen. Um, but it is what it is, man. NFL is a business. Pick number 26, the San Francisco 49ers. And I thought about corner. Also looking at this tackle class, so I might might switch up my pick here. Denzel Burke's looking kind of nice. What is a bigger need? Because I feel like this corner class is actually pretty deep. And the tackle class falls off a little bit. So we're going to stick with my original pick and go Graham Barton. Right tackle of the future for them across from uh, Trent Williams. I think it's a beautiful pick. Uh, he's been a little bit injured this year. But he is still a really good tackle prospect out of Duke. And you can see when he is not on the field how bad that offensive line plays compared to when he is on the field. Same with uh riley leonard or whatever quarterback is in there for duke the difference in play is insane when he is not on the field pick number 27 this is where uh old denzel burke is gonna go i think that adding to the secondary is never a bad idea and especially when ramsey is not getting any younger uh he's also been injured a little bit the last couple seasons um nothing major but still and then Xavier Howard I am not the biggest fan of but you also don't have a like really really good um CB3 there uh Kalen oh man Kalen Kohu I think his name is um He's been all right, but Denzel Burke is definitely an upgrade. He can be a wide receiver three. You might be able to move him into the slot. I don't know. Um, he may, he mainly works on the outside, but you've kind of seen him in the slot a little bit. But I still think adding to the secondary is never a bad thing. Secondary depth, edge depth, you want it all. Pick number 28, Jags probably wanted Denzel Burke to fall, get someone across from, uh, oh, what's his face? Oh my goodness, I'm blanking on everyone today. Out of Georgia, a couple years ago, Tyson Campbell. But not how it worked out, they're going to go get themselves some run help uh, and some pass rush in Jerzon Newton, who... I think has pass rush upside, but definitely is a force to be reckoned with in the run game. Pick number 29, the Detroit Lions. Keon Coleman was in Michigan at the start of his college career. Bring him back, but actually use him, please, Dan Campbell and Ben Johnson. Uh, unlike Jamison Williams, if you actually used him, say, you, if you're a Lions fan, next year you're walking out. Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, and uh, Keon Coleman. That is a damn good receiving core. And then you have Josh Reynolds as your wide receiver four and uh, whoever else you really want. And then Sam Laporte as your tight end. That is a scary, scary receiving core. Pick number 30 to maybe the best team in football right now, the Baltimore Ravens. They need some corner help. And I'm going to go Kalen Carson. Almost went Kamari Lassiter here. Um, just because of his like physical nature as a corner. But went Kalen Carson, who's just as good uh, here late in the first. They, they need someone across from Marlon Humphrey, man. Geno Stone's been cool. But, I mean, you, you know as a Ravens fan, it's... 
a little bit of luck and just really good like you put the right players in the right position type coaching so which is a really good thing to have in your coaching staff that confidence to be able to have that um and bring in guys who might not be the highest pick or you know stuff like that and they make a big time plays for you so Carl now wake forest to the ravens but now moving on to a surprise surprisingly good defense in the Kansas City Chiefs. We are not going to add to it. We are actually going to add to the offense with Xavier Worthy out of Texas. Yeah, he's pretty damn good. Um, I mean, he can punt return for you. He can go deep. He is an absolute deep threat across from A.D. Mitchell, who it should get first-round hype as well. Um, good route runner. He can get separation with that explosiveness and the release off the line. You can put him in the slot. You can put him outside. Maybe needs to add a little bit of, of juice to him. He's a little bit light, but Xavier Worthy is an incredible player. Uh, now, I can't scroll down, but it is the Eagles at pick 32. And yes, Michael Penix is going to fall out of the first round here, which I don't think will happen, to be honest. But we are going to go Barrett Carter with the final pick in this draft. So two Clemson linebackers go in this one, and that is mock draft number three of the season. Obviously, Penix will go in in this. Um, definitely could have taken him at 14 to the Raiders uh, easily. Could have taken him even to the Falcons at 11. Um could have went instead of Bo Nix, Michael Penix, uh, the Saints. There's a lot of places you could go. The Commanders, like, there's a lot of landing spots. Um, but like I said, we were getting a little bit wild with this one. Caleb Williams and Drake May all in Bucks and the Giants. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, <laughs> don't slew me too much. Man, so. We don't really know what's going to happen until people are drafted and anything can happen in the NFL draft. So hopefully you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. If you did, comment down below how you feel about your team's pick in this one or who you would rather them pick, I guess. Um, but like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.